Hey guys, welcome to my garden. It has been well over 100 degrees this entire week. So I thought this was a really good time to show you guys here in Zone 10, Southern California, what it looks like in a true summer uh, season with things that are thriving, things that are not. I'm gonna grab my juice and we're gonna get started. This is a Jambu juice that I've been, my first time juicing actually, thanks to my friend and her hookup. I was able to pick these with her over at her friend's house because they have more than enough to share. Mm. Got some peppermint here, so good too. We're gonna get started talking about these two elevated raised beds. I have been doing so many DIY product, products, projects in this garden that I can't wait to show you guys the updates and the changes I've made in here in um, another garden tour but in this one i'm just going to focus on the plants i just put in some special green beans that are doing really well until yesterday there was some you know sunburn on the leaves so that was a good indication that it is definitely time to put the shade up and i think the shade will only stay up for about a week or just for this heat wave yeah so that's why i got the roselle here not covered up but the rest of the the bed is the roselle is doing amazing as you guys can see it loves 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 the heat it thrives with the heat in fact i'm seeing the most growth in this past week and a half or so and i actually planted these roselle pretty late in the season i got started putting them out in like april i think march or april from seed but i just kind of pot them up step up the potting size very very slowly they were getting a little stressed in their tiny little two to three inch pots until i only recently put this in like maybe three weeks ago but it started getting hot and i was concerned it was going to be too late but not so bad i don't think this plant's going to get giant because i did transplant it very late in the season but it's it's putting out a crazy amount of growth in the past week and a half or so because of this extreme heat we're getting also, check this out, guys. This is a kabucha, sort of a squash, but the flavor of the squash is supposed to smell like taro. So I'm really excited about this. This is like a Taiwanese variety. Okay, I'm back. The phone just got overheated, so I just took it out of the fridge right now. Let's get back to showing you guys what I was talking about. I grew both plants from seed. This one was planted, I think, three weeks before the second plant went in. This plant, took off I think about a week after it was planted maybe even less than a week it started putting out these nice beautiful big leaves very quickly but then the roselle caught up so the roselle started shading it and then it started getting these funny looking growth here because you know the squashes really love the sun so hopefully it's it's looking better now I fertilized and I kind of moved it out a little bit of sun I was kind of like making it stick out a little bit to get more sun. So hopefully as it grows towards the sun, it would look healthier. Here's a second plant. This is a second plant that was put in about two and a half or three weeks after that one was placed. And look at the difference because this one is getting a lot more sun than the other one. All these like sun loving vegetables are looking amazing look at the growth look at the difference isn't that crazy the sun does wonders because these two beds have very similar soil and this one was put in later but because of the sun look at the difference this is a new variety of sweet potatoes i'm really excited about growing definitely sweet potatoes is a big winner when it comes to uh tolerating the heat this is a very lime green one really i just think they look so nice next to each other now not all sweet potatoes grow tubers and this one is a new variety that i got that would grow tubers but have very beautiful deep purple leaves as well that i can eat this leads me to this tomato patch i want to show you guys now earlier in the season i put down straw as a mulch it was a cheap straw that i got and these plants these tomatoes now looking amazing and has like a bunch of uh, uh flower buds on it it definitely have revived from the herbicide poisoning these plants were looking terrible about 
I think maybe three weeks in from putting the, the straw mulch down. So don't miss out on my next episode to share with you guys what I have done to save these tomato plants. I mean, would you look at this little tomato forest here? Okay, now this, these are the strawberries. These strawberries and this vertical tower, I really do enjoy. I think it takes up less space. I can grow a lot in this vertical space. And uh, I got some different varieties growing here. Some that they say would do better in the heat. Is it because it's um, way too hot though? It is putting out a lot of beautiful pink flowers, but the fruits are smaller right now. And that could also be like a heat stress for strawberries. This is a different Alpine variety I'm growing here. This is the uh, Yellow Wonder and White Soul. These Alpine strawberries, just like the name, they usually, you know, I think they originate up in like the higher altitudes where it doesn't get as hot. So um, they are producing, but the leaves are getting burned more than others, other strawberries. And they have a little bit of astringent flavor to them versus the pineapple, um, strawberries those taste amazing and they put out growth a lot however this is pretty sad looking but they're just now coming back because they were they were sort of like hidden in this spot this is like a pineapple uh alpine and uh they're now in the shade because i actually had to dig them out of their original bigger pot they weren't getting enough water because they are like kind of far back in the garden, these poor plants. So I hope to revive them. They're one of, a couple of them are looking better. This is the Greenstock Vertical Planter. They sent me this one and then I loved it so much. I ended up picking up two on my own when they had a sale last time. In fact, you guys, they are running a sale again for over Labor Day weekend really awesome sale I would definitely jump in on that if you guys are interested you can use my code link down below there's six planting space per tier guys and there is seven tiers here so 42 plants pepper is kicking butt here uh, as well as the little cherry tomatoes the dwarf varieties oh I was just telling you guys about um, strawberries that's right so I really I'm just in love with uh, the reviews people talked about um, Charlotte variety because they smell so good and they taste so sweet but most people that grow that variety is out in Ohio so I thought I'd give it a shot they actually are doing really well out here I did not plant it on the highest tier I thought in case they want a little bit of shade so I planted it out and started in the second tier and they are here getting quite a bit of Sun let's see where it's at Oh my gosh, it really smells amazing. It smells like what you picture, what a strawberry would smell like. It smells like a cross between like a very fragrant strawberry Jolly Rancher and like an Alpine. Mm. It has a really smooth texture. The flavor is really good too. It's sweet and tart, more sweet than tart. Yeah, so it's not fruiting like crazy, but it is my first year growing it. I would love to get more of that variety growing though. This is the Sweet Allison. I really love the flowers are so dainty and they're really good for the pollinators. But I don't think I just get enough sun for them to really have that crazy big blooms maybe I need to put it on the highest tier because they really do love the sun so so much you can tell that it is stretching <laughs> as um they're growing all around with all the basil the basil by the way has been amazing just by you know being in this green stock I've planted I think like five basil different varieties of basils in here I got like the lime basil um the black like purple opal leaf basil the ruffled purple basil italian sweet basils uh and just all kinds of herbs in here that i've been able to 
harvest many, many times here for my salads, but the sweet alisum just doesn't do much in this garden. A couple of times in the past, they did really well in like a super sunny spot. <sighs> Let's do some harvesting while I'm chatting with you guys. Right. We got a little water feature here. You know what thrives in the summer? I need to work on that solar panel. <laughs> it only goes on sometimes. This has only been in here for I think a week and it's putting out roots and new growth right here. Cause it kind of gives like the bees a place to stand on and um, I get to harvest a little bit of these to eat. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so let's harvest these cherry tomatoes. Thank you. So these cherries <laughs> are finishing up. They came out as a volunteer over winter and they're finally finishing up. Well, another vegetable that thrives in the heat is Egyptian spinach. This is the green variety. Uh, I really love this green vegetable. It's just that this year I started out some of the summer plantings late because of all the projects that was going on. I had nowhere to, to plant them. So uh, yeah, they're coming. Another variety that I really like is the red stem Egyptian spinach. These, just like the name, you can tell they absolutely love the heat. I mean, it put on like this much growth overnight. I'm not even joking. And that usually doesn't happen that much in this garden because it gets a lot less sun than a normal garden. So things tend to grow at a slower rate. This is Go to Pola, also known as Rao Ma in Vietnamese. I just love this um, as a beautiful ground cover. They like the heat and uh, really good for low spots that are like stay sort of wet. I just love to snip these up and uh, blend it with some cane juice and it's so, so good. And it's um, good for your brain health. Here's another one that I finally moved in to this spot. This is a um, root beer plant. It seriously smells like sarsaparilla, guys, this plant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it smells so good. And um, just so um, you can have them in a tea form or, or I think Mexican culture, they grill them with like a meat or eggs or some things like that. And um, yeah, I love the smell of this thing. Not, I don't think you're supposed to eat too much of it, but just use it as an herb, like a spice is okay. Another tropical plant I want to show you that they love this heat, but they also like moisture. That's why I've really mulched it heavily to conserve water. Here's a propagation I just did of the uh, katuk plant. This is the variegated katuk. This, the leaves are so gorgeous. I am hoping that I can grow out a little more to fill in this space here with the ver uh, variegated katuk. getting some spider mite damage from uh, usually that happens when the plants have gone through a period of heat right over here that's trailing up this is the grass jelly we've been eating oh my gosh so many of these i mean this is one perfect leafy green to have in the summer because I can extract the juice and literally taste like a jelly jello kind of a texture. In fact, I have a video showing you guys how I make these. I'll point you guys to that video if you're interested. Uh, yeah, it is so perfect when I put them in the fridge chilled and have them with a bit of sweet, uh, sweet um, cane juice or coconut water in it or something, or even a little bit of honey. It is so, so delightful. This plant grows crazy in the heat. In fact, we had to cut back a lot because it was growing so vigorously. This is definitely one of those plants that once it starts taking off, you'll always have abundance of them. If you guys are interested in growing that, I do have that at my shop. I'll, I'll link you guys to that. Here's something really cool. This is the um, Barbado Gooseberry. Not only are the flowers that look like mini dragon fruit flowers, it's so dainty, white color, so cute, but it fruits. 
and the fruits are like this yellow looks like a yellow cherry tomato and it's very nutritious but not just for the fruits the best thing about it is that the leaves are also edible and the leaves have a very high amount of protein compared to other uh, plant-based food but the scary thing about it which is also kind of cool is that it is more like a consider as an ancient cactus so it's like a vine doesn't look like a true what we know as a cactus nowadays but it does have thorns the more mature the branches are the scarier the thorns can get speaking of the cactus family remember that really insanely tall dragon fruit trellis that i put up last year and you guys were like saying oh no it's so tall how are you gonna get to the flowers well I have to kind of compromise with the space. There's only a foot and a half of walkway space here. Um, so when the dragon fruit grows up, you wanna prune the top part so that it would dangle down. And when it dangles down, it's going to like get in the walkway and they're full of spikes. So that sounds harmful to be walking by. And they also like the sun. That means it has to grow higher than the wall to get more sun or to flower. But then my neighbor's side is also on a higher part of the slope. So I also have to accommodate for them. You know, people walking, there's a lot of foot traffic in the, on the driveway on their side. That is why it is all the way up. What is this, seven and a half feet tall? The plants are so mature when I was putting them in. It was such a pain to put them in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they've grown all the way to the top and there's actually flower buds if you guys look closely. In fact, one of them recently flowered, but I just didn't get pollinated. I completely missed out on it that night, but it was only one flower anyway. I don't know if this flower requires cross-pollination. Right back here is the shampoo ginger. It, um, puts out these flowers that when you squeeze it, it oozes out this kind of like soapy like and very fragrant um, water that you can wash your hair with. I'm really hoping that it's going to flower for me. I mean, it does seem to like its home. It's just that it is a little hotter than it's used to. So the leaves are closed up right now, but by the evening or early morning, they do fully open. So right now I think they are trying to like conserve moisture, kind of like tomato plants that would, the leaves would curl up when it's too hot or it's not getting enough water. Right over this side, recently, in fact it was just a few days ago, I just put up that uh, lattice for the white bitter melon to climb. These white bitter melons are just starting to take off. And then the lupa, you guys, the lupas are finally taken off. It's been a slow race here because of, you know, the lack of sun in this space. Yeah, but I'm finally seeing some flowers on the loofah vine. This is the Chinese chrysanthemum that we use for tea. They usually start growing just like other mums in the fall and they flower. It really does love the heat. This is the Mexican honeysuckle and the leaves are really good. They say it's good for blood sugar and it puts on these like very fiery um, orange colored flowers that the hummingbirds really love. There's no flowers right now. They usually flower in, uh, from spring to like early midsummer, but they're putting out a bunch of growth. I have to cut these back and dry them for tea. Oh my God. When it's getting green, it's getting old. Completely missed. How did I miss the zucchini? <sighs> this is another sweet potato that's doing really well. This one started out early, early, like in the uh, midwinter or something. <laughs> These squashes died back because I actually put um, the straw mulch as well on the bottom of that, of this vine. So I'm wondering if that could be the reason why this, this um, red curry vine died. This really sad looking thing is a rose scented bee balm. I think it's too hot in the zone for it. It was growing really well in the springtime and now early summer. It was starting to get a little burn on the leaves. So I moved it to this bright shaded or partial shade area. It never made it past this height and it started to dry out. Yeah, I hope that they would just spread out more so I can just pick the leaves for tea because they smell really good. 
something more exciting. This is the Black Suriname Cherry. This is the sweeter variety. So I love how like cute these mini pumpkin looking fruits are. And then this tree has grown twice the height since last year. Still flowering. And uh, they're ready to eat when you tap it and they just fall off your hand and it's usually like in it's really black color. Really, really cool. Right over here is the Bacoba Water Loving Ground Cover. I love how it cascades and has these like tiny little flowers. Right there. This is also one that I like to grow it for brain health. Well, looks like I got some produce that I got to prep for tonight. Oh, thank you guys for joining me out here on such a hot day. If you guys are looking for some plant seeds and garden supplies, go check out my website. It'll be a really great way to support this channel. I'll, I'll put that link down below for you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you have not and hit the bell button for updates. I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye, guys.